For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Send me guys a bit of sort of review video on kind of cool boxes and cool bags and kind of a little, hopefully a bit of advice of what is the right one to buy. And in honesty, it really does depend on kind of what you're going to use it for, how you're going to use it, what your power source is, how long you're going for. So there's a lot of kind of different factors to consider when you're buying the right sort of kind of cool box depending on what you're camping with. So what I'm going to hopefully do in this video is give you a bit more idea about which stage you want to kind of go for uh, and how maybe some might work better in other scenarios and in other versions. So we'll sort of start at the start and work our way up so you can kind of get a bit more an idea whether what I'm going to show you is going to kind of suit what you're going to use it for uh, and then we'll sort of finish at kind of the top end and a bit of a reference. So to start with, everyone kind of knows it almost like you're uh, your day bags, your little cool bags to go to the beach uh, or for picnics. You know, these are perfect for a few hours or probably half a day at the most. Um, and they're basically just sort of kind of a foil back kind of insulated bag. Nice and neatly, uh, small, compact, very cheap and quite happy to do. Uh, and it does a job, which is the main thing. So obviously with these, you're kind of relying on um, putting stuff in there that's already cold and it kind of keeps its kind of coolness. Alternatively, you are looking then at some buying freeze boards and that stuff to kind of help keep it cool. They're not particularly efficient in terms of anything longer than sort of, like I said, half a day really. Um, and they're not really designed for that. So what you find is that the more and more you go into it, that kind of cool air is escaping because it's not producing its own kind of coolness inside. So some of them have a little quirky kind of small little lid at the top you can open, so it means you're not letting as much kind of cool air out. So that's kind of sort of the starting point in the spectrum. Next one kind of version up from this in many ways is kind of, um, it's still in the kind of the passive boxes range, is traditional kind of passive boxes. So particularly they tend to be sort of blow molded, quite sturdy and strong, tend to come with sort of carry handles as well. Now, you will find different versions of these again, starting from say like a one day, uh, do two days, three days, five days, and we do even do sort of, sort of high end marine ones, which are seven days. In terms of it's quoting, it's saying sort of, for example, seven days, seven days of keeping sort of ice cool or water cool for that matter. It is basically not gonna keep ice completely frozen for seven days. It's more just everything's gonna kind of stay cool inside. So you may still have some ice cubes at the end of it, but it all comes down to how often you open and close the lid because essentially every single time you're doing that, all of that coolness is escaping. So the figures they produce on the boxes tend to be if you were to keep the lid shut pretty much constantly, how long it would give you. So naturally, the more and more you're in there, the worse the performance is gonna be. They are quite a good, nice alternative because you can take them anywhere. You haven't got to worry about sort of having power or if you're going away somewhere for the weekend, for example, you don't want to have something that runs off power. You can literally chuck it in the back of your, you know, the pickup truck or in your sort of camper van, sort yourself out for the weekend and come back and sort it out. So that's where it works really, really well. Some of them have little sort of lids, again, for you sort of, uh, if you're going to the beach, you put your essentials in there. Again, wheels and uh, sort of a pulling part as well, so it means you can travel a bit longer journeys on that. So that works really nicely, but you are very much relying on kind of actual freeze packs or ice or that sort of stuff. Now, there are different shapes and sizes of these. Traditionally, I'd probably say actually the sort of fatter, chunky ones tend to work better just because it's almost like, if I use the analogy, like ice. If you've got a thin ice, it'll actually bounce quicker, whereas you've got a thick block of ice, it tends to stay. And it's the same kind of premise, in my opinion, with these. Um, admittedly, you can almost create like a sandwich layer with these and you can make sure you get an even kind of coolness and that does help. Um, but for me, I tend to favor kind of these personally. So that's kind of passive boxes in a nutshell. If you're looking for something a little bit more next level up, we're then on to thermoelectric. Now, thermoelectric essentially is just fan-powered um, cooling. So what you tend to find is just a flower constantly working, trying to get the internal sort of temperature of the box as low as it possibly can go. Now, most boxes tend to have um, what they call like a, a, a degrees below ambient temperature. So it's how many degrees it will get at a best push below whatever temperature it is wherever this box is situated. So you have it outside and say it's 25 degrees and it will go 20 degrees below ambient temperature. The best it's possibly get to is around about sort of five. Really it's probably looking about seven or eight to be perfectly honest which is kind of where you want kind of fridges to be. Now, most of this probably is most common for certainly camping, especially when in the UK, and it tends to do the job. You tend to find you have 12 volt versions of these as well as main powers and some of them have both. You can actually convert a 12 volt version over to a mains by buying an adapter, um, which perfectly does the job. 
but it's quite nice if you've got a box that does both and you haven't got to have then buy an additional part just to have it running on the mains. Now with thermoelectrics because essentially it's fan powers um, it is noisy because it's going to well noisier than anything we've kind of got here because it's just a fan going around so if you imagine like your bedside fan going around constantly that's kind of the noise you're going to get. They try and reduce the noise down quite a bit by actually having a dual fan system in most boxes so you've also got one having an intake and one sort of for the actual box itself so that way it's not having one fan working twice as hard. Um, what you find is actually with these are really designed more just for using on mains power um, so when you get to a campsite and you've got electric hookup you plug it in it'll just constantly keep going and that's it. They're not designed to go fully constantly for weeks on end um, they are sort of you know otherwise you end up burning the motors out eventually so you've kind of got to be a bit more you know accommodating of it really in, in kind of its, its use but for weeks camping you, you shouldn't have a problem. Now what you do find is that um, you will able to use these on mains, like I said 12 volt lead does tend to come with it. The 12 volt lead's not particularly brilliant to use as its own source anyway, it's more of put it on at home, get the stuff, get the internal sides cool, put your stuff inside of it, on the journey down you put it on 12 volt, when you get to the other side you put it on uh, back onto mains again. You wouldn't use it on 12 volt mainly because it, it's very thirsty in its consumption, you know what it needs to power it. You're looking around about four amps an hour, which you know is quite a considerable amount. So, if you say had a, a hundred amp leisure battery, which you know most kind of caravans or something had, within sort of best part of 25 hours, the battery is dead. So it's pointless having something like that and trying to run it off 12 volt. It's really just meant for a mains box. Um, I mean, we do have some. You, we do sell like a little sort of power bank that runs sort of cigarette lighters so you could in theory take that down to the beach for a couple of hours and still use it but really it's more meant to be sort of plugged into the mains itself. Now we kind of move on to, um, well actually before that, there are versions of this in the UK as well as the Europe so what you find is there are some higher powered thermoelectric boxes that go 30 degrees below ambient temperature rather than 20 so what you find is that for the European market where you've got hotter sort of temperatures it works better so you can buy those but initially they are more expensive. For the UK market mass majority of people will honestly probably go for something like this because it sort of fits the bill. Uh, one thing I will say is when you say 20 degrees below ambient temperature it's where the box actually is so if it, you've got it say outside uh, it's not a problem if you are inside tent you have to bear in mind that actually probably the temperature inside your tent is going to be warmer than it is outside so in its range it will go down to it's going to sort of hinder that quite a bit so there's all these sort of things you do have to consider with these sort of products but for the mass market this tends to be where people go. The next kind of level up from that is kind of absorption so absorption basically um, is well it's been around for sort of decades again um, but what you find is that it's basically sort of turning sort of gas into liquid form and pumping that around and cooling it. So the main kind of headline news with absorption is that it, we call it like a freeway fridge. You've got 12 volt, you've got mains, you've got gas. You can use any of those three things to power it. Admittedly for me um, 12 volt it's very thirsty so again not something you want to do if you're sort of off the grid or um, yeah you haven't got an electric hookup. Mains works well, uh, it's quite quiet as well so you won't actually know it's sort of on which is one of the benefits certainly of absorption and gas is probably the main sort of thing, it means you can take it pretty much anywhere so um, and in terms of efficiency it's very efficient on gas so what you find is that they usually run between say uh, 200 grams and about 250 grams for 24 hours so I mean, if you had say a 6 kilogram gas bottle it will land best part of 24 days which is an awful lot to use on this um, you know it means you can go for here for several weeks and it not be a problem that's one of the joys kind of of this. You've got a little thermostat um, which you can kind of go up and down um, in terms of sort of choosing say from a one to five level how best it's going to work. Traditionally you find actually they are a bit bulkier because the system at the back is a bit bigger so if I turn that around so you've got kind of this part here is all kind of the system itself and then the front part is cooling. You tend to see it more in a chest kind of cabinet but you do also have kind of door fridges um, and a lot of ones that are built into motorhomes already and, and sort of caravans for that example are freeway fridges because you want to run it on gas. The key thing with gas though is that sometimes they, this one in sort of units in particular that aren't sort of fixed in is they can be a bit temperamental shall we say 
Reason being is they need to be completely on a flat surface, so not slightly tilted or anything like that for the system to work properly. Other things, well, if you're sort of chucking them around a bit or moving them about, and you almost, like I said, move it so it's not particularly flat, similar to you know how fridges are at home a little bit, you find that it doesn't work properly. It needs sort of about 24 hours to completely settle down. In, in days gone past, we used to say you almost have to do like a reset where you turn it upside down for 24 hours, turn it upside the other way for 24 hours, and it works that way. The other thing to bear in mind is because essentially you, if you run it on gas or anything, you are producing carbon monoxide. So it also is a toxic gas and you need to have it in more of an open area. So you want to make sure that it's not in the heart of the tent um, because well, you could, you could fume everyone out. Um, so you want it in a sort of sheltered area because most boxes aren't sort of weather tight, um, but you want it sort of away from the elements, but enough ventilation so you get an airflow through, so you're not sort of breathing all that toxic gas. But overall, it's, it's quite a nice box, albeit a little bit temperamental from time to time. It's one of those things, if you know how to use and you know what you're doing, it's class, you know, it's sort of in a bit of a league of its own in many ways. The next sort of system we'll talk about is um, compressor. So a compressor system is what now most people tend to have in their home. And the joys of that is actually that it works in a way that can be very efficient, but also you can actually dictate what temperature you want it to. So the whole ambient temperature thing is completely out of the question here. You're telling it what you want it to do. One of the benefits of that is actually it'll sort of cut in, cut out as it needs to, to make sure it sort of, it, it keeps that internal temperature as it needs to be. So from a point, it, it, you won't obviously hear it until, unless you do, and it might have a little bit of a whine and then come back on. Like I said, same as our kind of domestic fridges at home in many ways. Other things to bear in mind is that what you find is they can actually go to lower temperatures and uh, sort of warmer temperatures than your typical boxes because, again, you're setting it what you want it to. So a lot of boxes will go below, sort of, you know, below minus 11 or minus 15, depending on the sort of rating of the box itself. There are different versions of compressors, so you'll find 12 volt and mains versions of it. The key thing is you're, if you're going completely off grid, you want to make sure you go for a really, well, a proper uh, compressor box. Reason I say that is that some are very efficient on 12 volt and some are very efficient on mains. You want to make sure it's both because some don't are not so brilliant on 12 volt as well, so you don't get the same consumption levels. A properly good um, sort of compressor box on with a good 12 volt system, you're looking in the regions of sort of about 0 0.3, 0 0.2 amps an hour. So we're talking you know, a tenth of what this does. So if this does 20, you know, 25 hours, that's going to do 250 hours. So it's, that's the sheer amount of drasticness you've got between the two. And it also means that, for example, if you've got, say, a solar panel, often you can kind of almost offset the consumption of that with the solar panel, depending on how good the solar panel is, of course. Um, immediately that sort of 0 0.2 amps to, to 3 amps an hour does depend on the temperatures as well, so that does vary. But you can see how drastic the difference is between these systems. And for a side point, when this is on 12 volt, it's about zero point, uh, so it's about seven amps an hour. So it is quite thirsty. That's the joy kind of our compression. The other thing you can find with compression is that you can also find you have dual chambers. So you can set one as fridge and one as freezers. And again, you can alter the temperature as you see it. The problem with it is A, uh, it's very expensive and a good unit will cost you quite a bit and the, the, the price really comes down to getting that 12 volt system running you know to have a, a really economical 12 volt system that's what you pay your money for but if say if you're going off grid or put it into a camper van that's where it's worth spending money getting the right equipment there is key because anything but down here is going to drain your battery down and be completely useless so that's where kind of that sits in its own bracket for a camping side of you when you could have mains occasionally, um, or, or well, have mains console, I should say, they do a hybrid aversion. So what you find, it's not it's a mixture between compression and then firmer electric, so fan powered. Now, the way this works is when it's on 12 volts, it acts like a cool box. So again, for that transit period, you just plug it in, it keeps it ticking over. So before you go away, plug it in, get that temperature. Again, because it's a compression unit, you can digitally set what temperature you want it to do and it will monitor it at that temperature. So put all your stuff in once it's got down to temperature. Journey down, use the thermoelectric part of it, back down to the campsite, plug it back in and we're back on mains. Now, with the mains, of course, because it's a compressor, 
you don't have much noise, it just kicks in and out, occasionally a little whine or whatever it has to be, but it's quite subtle in the way it does it. Plus the fact you benefit from having a, well, it can be a freezer as well as a fridge. So again, it doesn't matter if you say, oh, I've had people with probably middle conditions, they need a particular temperature for their medicine to be stayed at. Now that's where you can get, you know, pretty much near enough guarantee it with this kind of unit, and you can't do so with that. It's all bearing on what temperature you've got outside. The problem with, again, with compressors is, it's still quite bulky in terms of the size it takes up, so not too dissimilar to what we had here with that gas-powered version. Um, again, you've got the lid that goes up, but the digital display does make it quite swift and easy. But from a price point of view, actually you find that this kind of unit here, with the, being a hybrid, is around about the same sort of price as your gas-powered. So it does really chop and change and depending on what kind of level you want to go to. So overall, like I said, it, 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 that's kind of what you see. So for me, the mass majority of the UK are going sort of camping and such. Really, your sort of thermoelectric boxes or a passive you want for a shorter stays works well. If you're going kind of off-grid uh, in the middle of a field uh, and you're just sort of kind of camping in many ways and you don't have some like a leisure battery, really absorption is probably your best bet, providing you sort of get to grips with it and know it a bit better, you know, nice fine tuning. Um, if you want to sort of control the temperature, um, regardless of where you're going, uh, and you've got mains, and you don't want to spend a fortune, that's when this compressor works really well, sort of the hybrid in many ways. But then if you're going off-grid occasionally, or you want really low consumption, um, or the ability of dual chamberage, the fridge and freeze, uh, that's where, or on sort of narrow boats for example, that's where your full-on compressor comes into its own. So that should hopefully give you a bit more of an idea about it. If you want more information, you can always check the link below, which goes to our website where we have different versions of products. Um, often we tend to probably, have, from our point of view, have more in store than we do online, just because with some things being temperamental, um, shipping can also be, it can get damaged in sort of transit. So we're personally a bit more cautious about that. So that's when the things, maybe it's an in-store purchase and you can also get a bit more grips about sizes, how much space you get internally uh, through there. So they do top and change really on the maps. But like I said, any more questions or queries, feel free to let us know via the comments box below or check uh, the link below, which takes you through to our range that we stock uh, at our shop. So yeah. That's kind of a little bit of a, a getting to know and how's to of kind of cool boxes for camping.